as we teeter on the brink of nuclear war, the brink of World War III, the brink of potential nuclear annihilation, at least for the Northern Hemisphere. Today I'm coming to you from Nakuru, Kenya, almost right on the equator, not quite, very near the equator. In beautiful East Africa in the middle of the rainy season. As the world, as my native country, the United States of America, is vacillating, and our president is vacillating back and forth, left and right, between his uh, campaign persona, which was to de-escalate the war in Syria, to de-escalate the tensions, the unnecessary, the insane, the reprobate tensions with Russia, a nuclear power that has, by uh, very sober accounts, by reasonable accounts, surpassed my country, surpassed Washington, D.C., in its nuclear uh, capability with the recent annou announcements by Vladimir Putin about their ability to strike our targets from even containers, from, uh, you know, with, with, with nuclear-powered uh, ICBMs that, that, that can fly underneath our radar, that cannot be, that can be uh, indefinitely uh, and apparently are indefinitely orbiting the earth. My point is it's very reasonable to conclude at this point that that Russia has in fact <laughs> surpassed the United States of America in terms of her nuclear uh, deterrent and nuclear offensive capability. Okay? We forced them into it. By we, I mean the government we have, we have tolerated, we Americans have tolerated in Washington, D.C., the government that is poisoning every country around the world. For example, for example, over the past uh, three weeks, I've been researching these NGOs, non-government organizations, which is just a, an acronym uh, for, uh, for what amounts to uh, spy organizations, okay? Spy organizations that are designed to, to uh, subvert uh, foreign cultures and, and the governments and the ideologies of other nations with the secular humanism that the United States of America has degenerated to over the past decades, okay, since we abolished God from our public lives and from our legal system as the basis and his law as the basis of our laws. That's the reality. If you don't believe it, if you don't understand it, Come to Kenya. Go to Nairobi. Go to International Planned Parenthood Federation with all its money pouring in from the United States. Go to uh, IPASS from North Carolina, USA, uh, an organization whose only goal and only reason for being in Kenya is to promote the murder of innocent children through legalized abortion in rural areas and also in urban areas of Kenya using money pouring in from the United States of America. Yes, it's gotten a little better since Trump reinstated Mexico City policy, but that ain't enough. We are under blood guilt curses. Russia too. I don't, even though they've, they've moved uh, closer to uh, a monotheistic, a, a Abrahamic, a Christian uh, view of the world, especially with their restrictions on uh, sodomy, homosexual propaganda, gayism is what they call it here in Africa, they, uh, relative to Washington, seem to be more Christian, sort of like Washington was before the collapse of the Soviet Union. Washington really wasn't Christian. The West was already secularized then, but we seemed Christian compared to the USSR. Well, Putin seems very Christian, seems to be a sincere Christian, and the moves they've made have have been in the direction of of restoring a monotheistic worldview, nonetheless, and a Christian worldview, an Orthodox Christian worldview. Nonetheless, they have not, they have not criminalized abortion. They have not fully criminalized sodomy. Okay, so these are you know half measures, relatively speaking. Uh, many of the NGOs from from the U.S. are are against them because they are relatively Christian. Uh, the comparison is, you know, I mean, you, if, you, if you compare them to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, like Washington now, they look, they look a lot better. Uh, but that does not, that does not take away the blood guilt curses from all the decades of Russia's and the USSR's um, refusal to repent of the sexual immorality that began with the... Uh, uh, Bolsheviks and continues uh, 
uh, with their legalized abortion policy. It's there. They need to abolish it. And I know the patriarch, uh, Kirill, has uh, called for the abolition of abortion, and I'm praying for it. Nonetheless, what is developing <laughs> as the reprobates, what Paul, the, the word that Paul used in Romans chapter 1 was reprobate, because they refused, he said, to acknowledge, go read it, Romans chapter 1, because they refused to acknowledge God as God, he turned them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And which, what could be, what could be less convenient than for Washington at this time, as we are under these blood, guilt, biblical curses from the God of heaven who created the children that we have slaughtered through genocide, and that we, whose slaughter we, we, we seek to uh, spread all over the earth, even to cultures like the African cultures, to whom it is generally foreign and culturally foreign, and to whom we seek to spread the, the terrible and sick and wicked and satanic perversion of sodomy, gayism, homosexual rights, uh, same-sex marriage, okay? Yes, it's, it's, it's pulled back a little under Trump, but not enough. And the question is, the question is, even though I admit we've been given, if only for a few months, it's been a year of his presidency now, something like a reprieve from what would have happened under Hillary Clinton, let me tell you, that's not enough. That's not enough. We are standing on the precipice of death. Can you smell it? Can you feel it? Bob Dylan old uh, washed up Bob Dylan whom I used to idolize as a teenager I, I admit um, a week ago was reportedly recording a song about gay love how wonderful uh, you know romancing the love between the, the the sick perverted erotic love between a man and another man <laughs> well a few decades ago Bob Dylan wrote another song called death is not the end. And one of the verses went, When the cities are on fire with the burning flesh of men, just remember that death is not the end. And you search in vain to find one Laura biding citizen, just remember that death is not the end. And he went on to talk about how the tree of life is growing where the spirit never dies, and the bright light of salvation shines in dark and empty skies. But he forgot to mention one caveat. <clears throat> All those wonderful things he described, that Bob Dylan described in the chorus of that song, they all uh, hinge on repentance, on having a penitent heart a heart that is ready to repent, a heart that is repenting. We have to repent. We have to repent. And take this seriously. It's not Russia that we have to fear, Americans. It's not America and Washington that you have to fear, Russia. It's not uh, the United States that you have to fear, Chinese people. It's the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ who rules from heaven. And so this uh, nice alternative that Bob Dylan has given us, you know, death is not the end because the, the tree of life is growing, but that tree of life is reserved exclusively for the repentant, the penitent, okay? Where is your heart? Examine your heart. American pride isn't going to get us out of this one, all right? That reprobate mind that Paul talks about in Romans 1 is almost fully complete. It's almost fully encased like a cocoon, okay? Like invasion of the body snatchers. It's almost fully taken over the body politic of the United States, and it's almost fully taken over the White House, even under Donald Trump, whom the people elected to build the wall, but in great, in large measure, to get us out of these wars, and even though he was elected with that very clear mandate, talking to uh, the Bush family and telling them, uh, Jeb and, and George W., how stupid and how foolish and how wicked and reprobate it was for them to get us into these wicked and costly wars. Nonetheless, now 
he's appointed John Bolton and is, it is maneuvering us or himself being maneuvered by hook or by crook into more of the same wars. And now Russia is there saying, uh-uh, no more. When the cities are on fire with the burning flesh of men, just remember that death is not the end. And if you don't repent, and if you don't have a heart of repentance, are you hearing me? Then the burning flesh of men is not even over after death. And the fire is not over after death. Yeah, the, maybe the Pope tells his atheist friend that th there is uh, no hell. A hell does not exist. I think he said it, but I don't care. Who cares if he said it or if he didn't say it? There are many people who think it's not real. Some of them say they are Christians. They're lying to you. They're kidding themselves. The destruction of body and the destruction of soul is not over. My church is called Holy Resurrection Orthodox Church. And the reason it has that uh, qualifier, holy resurrection, is because there is also an unholy resurrection. Not all resurrection is holy. According to Jesus in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says that there's going to be another resurrection, okay? Not only the holy one, not only the resurrection of, of those who are dead in Christ, but what Jesus calls, and I quote, from the mouth of Jesus himself, the resurrection unto damnation. The resurrection unto damnation. Jesus is the one we have to fear. Okay? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, says the apostle, through the Holy Spirit, whatsoever a man, a human being, sows, that also shall he reap. Russia. North Korea, China, the United States of America are all drowning in the blood of innocent children. Okay? It's reality. It's reality. And we're all provoking one another. And guess who's in charge? It's not Satan we have to fear. It's not Russia. It's not Vladimir Putin we have to fear. Or, or Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Okay, or Robert, Robert Mueller, or the, any of these world leaders. Okay, the one we have to fear is the one who holds their hearts in his hands, the Lord Jesus Christ. And David spoke prophetically about the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ in many different places. But let's look at Psalm 11. From the Word of God, Psalm 11. To the chief musician... A Psalm of David. In the Lord, verse 1, in the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow on the strings, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, verse 3, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? David here is not talking about, I think you can tell, physical stone foundations. <laughs> David is talking about the real foundations. There, there's a, I won't go too far into this, but there's a school of, um, shall I say, uh, science right now, and philosophy, which are, despite the, the um, objections of some uh, secular humanist who worship science, philosophy and science are inextric inextricably intertwined. And there's a school that is taking the position now that, that the physical reality, and my friend Johannin Ratz is one of the leaders in developing this uh, perspective of reality, uh, one of the philosophical leaders, that, that physical, what we call material reality is illusory in the sense that it is not the solid reality that, that, that is truly real. It's emergent from what we normally call spiritual reality, and we think of it as clouds and, and things that are less substantial than uh, what we call material reality, but that science does not, in fact, bear out that conclusion. 
science bears out a conclusion, philosophy bears out a conclusion that these things that, that we see as solid, like my hand or this wood here, are actually, in, or, or, or a lion, or, or another human being, or, or, or a plant, are actually emergent from the more substantial, solid reality. And that is where the body of Jesus Christ, and more importantly, the spirit and the mind of Jesus Christ, is ruling as the Lord being described here in Psalm 11 by David. Ruling and filling space and time and all things including the mind of Vladimir Putin, including the mind of, of the vacillating double mind of Donald Trump. Nonetheless, God is overruling them. Okay, verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? You see, because as I try through the righteousness I have in Christ to speak to those remnant who are left, who still understand sound reasoning, if that reasoning, if the law of God is abolished in the hearts of people, what can I say to them? I can only speak to that remnant. There's nothing I can say to a madman. He can just stand on his head and, and mutter gibberish, you know, or rip off his clothes. There's, there's, no, there's nothing you can say to a madman unless God reestablishes by a miracle the foundation of truth. And God can do that. God can do that. That's why we're not authorized to give up, okay? We have to keep speaking the truth in love and not be weary in well-doing. Verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try. God puts to test the children of men. The Lord tries the righteous. So God is testing even the righteous. But the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul Hateth. Now make no mistake, we're not talking about this pansy, effeminate Jesus from all these Protestant and Catholic uh, paintings where he looks like if, if he picked the, the, who's supposedly a carpenter, right, uh, which would have been something like a stonemason, a very tough man, a gnarly, a gnarly dude, right, in, 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 a, in a far out province of the Roman Empire, but we look at these paintings and we see this hippie looking faggot who, 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 who basically looks like if he tried to pick up a, 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 um, a hammer, he would be like, ow. Oh. Okay, I'm not talking about that fake Jesus. I'm talking about the real Jesus, the son of David. Okay? He's the one. He's the one in charge. And he, if we don't repent, long-suffering though he is, merciful though he is, that doesn't mean that his long-suffering is forever. It doesn't mean he never says, okay, enough. Enough is enough. He can kill us all. He can kill us all, and he's able to destroy not only this life, but both body and soul forever in hell. Fear the Lord Jesus Christ. As we stand on the brink of nuclear war, on the brink of World War III, fear the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me continue. Psalm 11, verse 6. Upon the wicked. This is you, America. This is you. And Russia, isn't, yeah, Russia has a lot to answer for, too. But Russia isn't asking for this. Russia and Putin have done everything to get out of this. Okay? Everything reasonable. They're not insane like you. This is you, Americans. This is your government. Okay? Suck it up upon the wicked, that's you. He shall reign. Who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Upon the wicked, he shall reign snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright in heart. The righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. You better repent. It may be too late to avoid uh, what Dylan was describing, that moment where you look around and you see that the cities are on fire with the burning flesh of men. Are you hearing me? I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not being bombastic. I'm doing my best. God help me to communicate with you. 
And when that happens, and you look around, if we can't reverse it, I hope we can. I'm not saying we can't. I hope we can. But every day it's looking more and more and more like the fire and brimstone David is describing here, by hook or by crook, is coming. Okay? And if it's not, the only thing that can avert it is repentance. And if it comes, the only hope you have in the life to come is what is symbolized by this piece of uh, metal and wood here. By the way, Jesus did not have a diaper. He was not wearing pampers on, on the, or, or, or a cloth diaper on the cross. They stripped him naked. Okay, so this is not quite realistic. But nonetheless, this is a good symbol. I don't worship this as a relic, okay, or as an icon. But it reminds me, and it should remind you, of the only hope that we have. We're all dying. Death is coming. Are you hearing me? Death is coming. The worms are going to eat you, okay? If it's through nuclear holocaust, or if it's through diabetes, <laughs> all right, or cancer, it's coming. It's just a breath, this life. It's just like a grass or a flower, okay? Death is coming. Is your death in Christ? Will you be raised incorruptible, or will you be resurrected unto the resurrection of damnation? Think about it.